Okay, be honest. How many times have you asked ChatGPT for help and gotten back the most boring, lifeless response ever? Like it was written by a robot that works at the DMV. Yeah, same. I'd spend over 10 minutes trying to craft what I thought was a decent prompt and get back advice that sounded like it came from a fortune cookie. But after years of testing, tweaking, and honestly obsessing over prompt engineering, I figured out a simple framework that was a game changer. It makes your prompts ridiculously effective and in this video, I'm gonna be breaking it down for you. Not only that, I also built a custom GPT that actually writes these prompts for you following this exact framework. Plus, I'm gonna be giving you access to 250 plus ready to use prompts that I use with my clients to scale real businesses using AI. So if that sounds like something that you need in your life, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's get into it. All right, so here's the framework that's gonna completely level up your prompting game. It spells out castle, and it stands for character, action, setting, tone, lore, and expression. But here's the part that most people miss. There's actually a hierarchy to it, and not all six are equally important. Action is the foundation, and it's what tells ChatGPT what to actually do. Without it, nothing happens. Next comes setting, which gives that action some context to actually make it useful. And all the rest, they're kind of like the towers, the moat, the drawbridge, the flags, and all the other stuff that makes your castle feel legendary instead of generic. The thing is, you don't always need all six components. Sometimes action and setting are more than enough, but when you want those mind-blowing results that make you go, holy did AI just write that? That's when you go full castle mode. Oh, and as a side note here, in this video, I'm gonna be mostly referring to ChatGPT, but this framework that I'm gonna be outlining here applies to any large language model. So if you're using Claude or Gemini or Perplexity or Copilot, it doesn't really matter. The principles that I'm outlining here in this video apply to any LLM. So first up, we have action, which is the A in castle. And this is the foundation of any good prompt. So if there's only one thing you remember from this video, let it be this be stupidly specific about what you want ChatGPT to do. So most people type stuff like, help me with marketing, and then wonder why ChatGPT hands them an absolute snooze fest that sounds like it came from a high school textbook. The problem, that's not an action. That's a vague cry for help. Now compare it to this. Write a 150 word flash sale email for busy entrepreneurs who check email on their phones. See the difference? The first one is kind of like saying, make me a sandwich, whereas the second one is like saying, make me a salami Reuben on sourdough with mustard and pickles. So here's the rule. Start with an action verb. Write, generate, analyze, create, summarize, and then tell it exactly what kind of output you want. If you can't clearly state what action you want the AI to take, you're probably not ready to prompt yet. Go figure that out and then come back. Just fixing this one part will instantly 3X your ChatGPT results and we're just getting started. Next, we have setting, which is the S in castle. And this is what takes your prompt from meh to magnetic. If action is the what, then setting is the who, where, and why behind it. Here's the thing, ChatGPT is smart, but it's not a mind reader. If you don't give it any context, it fills in the blanks with the most boring generic assumptions possible. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a prompt with just action, write a social media post. And here's the same action with proper setting. Write a social media post for my sales coaching business. My audience is overwhelmed entrepreneurs 30 to 45 that are most active on Instagram during their coffee breaks. They're constantly behind and feel guilty about it. One gets you cookie cutter fluff, the other speaks directly to your people. So what do you include in setting? Some of the essentials are gonna include who are you, who's it for, what's the situation, and any key constraints. So as a pro tip here, Instead of having to fill out all this information every single time for every single prompt, in my school community AI Quest, we use something called a hero scroll. So just to show you what that looks like, if you're already in the community, you'll have access to this resource called Quest OS. It's basically like your operating system for your life and your business. If you're not already in the community, I'll include a link in the description for you to join and check that out. At the time of this recording, it's completely free. But once you're inside of Quest OS, you'll first see the command center. And within the command center, you're gonna see the creator tab. And within the creator, you're gonna see your hero scroll. So this is gonna be your hero scroll template. And this is gonna have everything that you need from your origin story. So who are you? What's your mission statement, personality type? What inspired this offer? You know, who is your ideal client avatar? All this stuff. So we're gonna fill out all this information into this one document. And this is a living, breathing document that we constantly update over time as you change, your offer changes, so on and so forth. But the key thing here is that 
instead of having to rewrite all that context and setting every single time that we want to write a killer prompt, we can literally just upload this one document that already has all that information in it. So when we provide all of that setting and context, we're gonna have absolutely kick ass results with our prompts and our outputs. I've also built a custom GPT that actually helps you write your hero scroll based on just a little bit of input on your end. So again, if you are inside of your Quest OS dashboard, you'll come into the council here. And this is where we have a few of our custom GPTs. The first one, is going to be Tyros here. So Tyros's job is specifically to help you put together your hero scroll. And all you have to do is really just give him a little bit of input about who you are and who you serve. And he can start putting together your hero scroll in as little as just one line. A little later in the video, we're going to be covering Korai. And in some future videos, we're going to be covering Valora. But since this video is specifically on prompts, Korai is going to be one of our go-to custom GPTs that we use for actually creating prompts. But more on that a little later in the video. All right, now we're getting into the fun stuff. Lore, which is the Ellen castle. This is where you give ChatGPT some reference material or examples so it knows exactly what vibe or structure you're going for. So think of it like this. If you're gonna get your hair cut, you don't just say, make me look good, you show the barber a photo. And that's basically what Lore does. It's like a style guide for your prompt. Here's a bad prompt. Write me an engaging email that converts. Like, what does that even mean? Now here's the same prompt, but with Lore. Write me an email like this one. And then we paste in an example email. It starts with a personal story, has short punchy paragraphs, has one call to action, and feels like I'm talking to a friend. Boom, way clearer. Now ChatGPT has a model to copy instead of just guessing. Your lore doesn't have to be perfect. It can be things like write in the style of a TED talk intro, make it sound like a text from a sassy best friend, or channel the energy of a sports announcer on Red Bull. As a pro tip here, start saving great content when you see it. Whether that's emails, social media posts, ads, or anything really. You can start building your own lore library. Then when it comes time to creating your prompts, you can just drop a few of those examples in there and let ChatGPT pattern match like a pro. Next up, we have character, which is the C in castle. And this is where we tell ChatGPT who it should pretend to be. By default, ChatGPT is like a super smart generalist, but when you give it a character to play, it instantly transforms into an expert with the exact experience that you need. Let me show you the difference. Here's a basic prompt. Help me write course copy versus this. You're a direct response copywriter with 15 years of experience writing high converting sales pages for course creators. You specialize in selling to skeptical entrepreneurs. That second one, whole different level. The trick here is to be ultra specific. Don't just say you're a marketer, Say you're a LinkedIn content strategist who's helped over 200 B2B service providers grow their audience by 300 plus percent. You could even stack characters and say something like, you're a copywriter and a psychologist who writes ethical persuasion that hits emotional triggers without sounding manipulative. You're basically casting your dream consultant for the job and ChatGPT nails it every time. Next up, we have expression, which is the Ian Castle. This one's all about how you want your output structured, because let's be real, Nothing kills momentum faster than getting back a giant wall of text when all you wanted was a simple list. Let's just say, for example, you ask, give me social media content ideas. You'll probably get a rambly paragraph with no real format. But now try, give me 10 post ideas in a numbered list. For each one, include a headline, a short description, and a sample hook. Way more usable, right? So think ahead. Are you copying this into a doc, reading it on your phone, sharing it with a team? Let that guide your format. Some of the go-to formats that I love include numbered lists, bulleted lists, step-by-step -step instructions, tables, scripts, and emails with subject, intro, body, and CTA. Basically, don't just ask for the what, tell it how to serve it up so it's ready to use. So last, but definitely not least, is tone, which is the T in Castle. And this is the vibe, the personality, the flavor. It's what makes your content sound like you and not like some generic AI bot that's stuck in corporate mode. By default, ChatGPT writes like a polite intern who's read too many textbooks. It's technically correct, but can be painfully boring. So here's a basic prompt. Write a post about taking breaks. You'll get something like, taking breaks is important for mental health and productivity. Snooze. All right, now let's add some tone. Write it like a sarcastic best friend who's giving tough love to a workaholic. Now it sounds like, Hey, overachiever, take a damn break. Your brain isn't a machine, and no, burnout doesn't count as a personality trait. Much better. You can say things like casual and funny, like texting a friend, confident but not cocky, or excited, like a golden retriever who just found a tennis ball. And as a bonus, you can also tell it what tones to avoid. So things like keep it playful, but don't sound cringy or try hard. Tone is the secret sauce that makes people go, wait, there's no way this was written by AI. 
All right, let's tie it all together so you can see the full castle magic in action. Most people write prompts like, help me with YouTube content. And yeah, you'll get something, but it won't move the needle. Now let's build the full castle together. So within ChatGPT, I'm gonna paste in a prompt that I've already written here that has all the elements of castle. So first we have character. You're a YouTube strategist who's helped 500 plus creators grow to over 100K subs, specializing in educational content that builds trust and drives conversions. For action, we have give me five video title ideas that hook viewers in the first three seconds and are optimized for a high CTR in the AI tools niche. For setting, we have I'm building a channel for solopreneurs who wanna grow their business with automation. My current audience is mostly 25 to 40 scrappy and values clarity over hype. For tone, we have smart and casual, like a cool friend who's obsessed with systems but still knows how to chill. For lore, we have titles should follow a proven structure, curiosity driven, include a number or benefit, and feel like something you'd actually click. Think Ali Abdal meets Alex Hormozy. And for expression, we have format as a bulleted list with the title and a quick note on why it works. So let's go ahead and submit this and see what we get. All right, so let's see what ChatGPT came up with based on our castle prompt. So as you can see, it gave us exactly what we asked for. It gave us our five YouTube titles in the exact structure and format that we wanted it to. So at the end of the day here, we're not just asking for help, we're giving ChatGPT a creative brief that it can follow very specifically. Now, if you're thinking this castle framework sounds awesome, but remembering all six parts sounds like a lot, yeah. I felt the same, which is why I built a custom GPT to do it for you. So again, if we pop back into Quest OS and we go into the council, this is where we can access Cori, the prompt genie, which is the custom GPT that I built to specifically build prompts following the castle framework. So if we click into Cori, we can see her page here, which is where we can summon her. And in here, we also have her origin story, her core philosophy, and some quotes from Cori. Uh, just because I'd like to do a little bit of character building and so on and so forth and just have a little fun with it inside of our community AI quest. Again, this is where you'll be able to access Cori. If you haven't joined yet, I'll leave a link in the description. But once you're in, this is how you actually summon her. So you'll click here and then that will pull her up here in ChatGPT. So to get started, all we need to do is click on the conversation starter, help me craft a prompt. We click that and then she's going to greet us, let us know what is it that we want a prompt about. So if we follow the same example that we used before, we can just say, I need help writing a YouTube script. So we'll give that to Cori and see what she says. So, ah, noble quest indeed. So she'll ask first some clarifying questions. And again, this is ideally what we would give her our hero scroll about. Okay, so I just attached my hero scroll that should have all the information that she needs. So I'll give her that and see what we get. All right, here we go. So she's gonna go ahead and put together the prompt and break it down by the castle framework. So C, character, mythic storyteller, elevated strategist, A, action, write a compelling YouTube script, S, setting, launch, slash promoting AI quest, P performance driven uh, via YouTube, T tone, elevated mythic bold, warrior monk meets Tony Stark, L lore, hero scrolls, detailed positioning, AI quest promise, offer stack, audience pain points and narrated themes, E expression, YouTube voiceover script with uh, visual cues for cinematic B-roll. So she's gonna give you a full on prompt that follows the whole castle framework based on everything that you've provided her. So she's giving us a super badass prompt that includes all these different components in it with just all we had to do was literally give her our hero scroll, which again, you'll get access to as a part of your Quest OS dashboard. And that's all. All we need to do is give her this context, this setting, and just let her know what we need a prompt about and we'll get a really epic prompt. But if you wanted to refine this even further, she's gonna give you options on how you can continue to adjust the prompt and refine it even further. And you can just tell her how you wanna adjust it and you can keep working on it together until you have the perfect prompt. So in addition to Quora here, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm also gonna be giving you access to my prompt database. So if we come back into our Quest OS dashboard, we'll come into prompts here. And this is gonna be a database of over 250 different prompts. And this is continually growing and expanding, but 250 at the time of this recording, but this is spanning across a ton of different use cases like AI agents and GPTs, audience growth, automation systems, brand identity, business strategy, client success, copywriting data analysis, hiring and team, mindset clarity, and the list goes on. It goes on and on and on. And each of these is a different type of prompt that follows the castle prompt framework. Again, all of this is completely free, at least at the time of this recording. All you have to do is just click the link in the description, join the community, and you'll be able to grab a copy of Quest OS, which has this prompt database in it. It has access to Cori, the prompt genie, Tyros, to help you put together your hero scroll and really just get started with this whole system. So if you're seeing the value in any of that, again, feel free to click the link below to get started today. Hopefully by now you can see how just tweaking the way that you write prompts 
completely changes the quality of your AI outputs. This is the stuff that turns your results from meh to holy this is gold. At this stage, you got the framework, you got the examples, and if you want help putting this all into practice, everything that I mentioned so far, including Cori the Prompt Genie, the Prompt Database, the Hero Scroll Builder, and so, so much more are all available inside the AI Quest community. As I mentioned, it's totally free as of this recording, but to be completely transparent, that might change as I keep building it out. So if you're even just a little bit curious, now's the best time to join. If this video provided value for you in any way, shape or form, I'd really appreciate it if you could do me a favor and drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me to keep creating content like this for you. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.